You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. We are at the Institute on Liturgy, Preaching, and Church Music, and we are continuing our Set Apart to Serve series today with a student from Concordia University, Irvine, mm-hmm. studying in the Director of Parish Music Program. We're going to learn more about that in just a moment. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin, for supporting The Coffee Hour. Find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live Uncommon. Joining us today, one of the attendees of the Institute on Liturgy, Preaching, and Church Music, Olivia Telke. She is the a student at Concordia University, Irvine, studying church music and the director of parish music program. Olivia, welcome to the coffee hour. Thank you. Thank you for having me. We're so excited to have the opportunity to sit down with a student and learn more about becoming a church worker, particularly a director of parish music. So let's start with where it all began. Where did your interest and love of church music begin? Well, my mom is or was a church musician. She occasionally still plays, but when I was young, She played every Sunday, and so I would sit in the balcony with her and my sisters and my dad, and oftentimes I would sit on my dad's lap, and he would sing the bass line, and I would sing with him and hear him with the melody, or hear him singing the harmony, and so I just really enjoyed the church music from that, and then my whole family has really encouraged just singing hymns at home and together, and so that was one of our favorite pastimes as a as a child for me and even now as an adult and so that's a lot of it so hymns are just one of my favorite things so fellow hymn nerd i like that <laughs> hymns are also one of my favorite things <laughs> fantastic so how did that love of church music as a child grow into this this uh, vocation that you're learning all about that you're being formed into at concordia irvine what, what did that look like uh your your journey to concordia irvine So I started on piano when I was quite young and cello, Mm -hmm. and the cello doesn't seem like it might be as important, but it is important, especially getting to Concordia Irvine for me. I had told my mom that I was never going to be a church musician. I wasn't going to be a teacher because everyone else in my family did that, and I wanted to do something different. But as I got closer to college and sort of figuring out what I wanted to do, I just realized that I really wanted to do something more with church music specifically and so I was looking at Baylor and I was looking at Concordia Irvine those were my two like top picks and I kind of wanted to do I was also interested in movie soundtracks oh playing for movie soundtracks specifically with cello and so my mom was like look at Concordia Irvine like it's a small like Lutheran school like it doesn't matter where you get your undergrad I was like Okay, fine. So (laughs) we looked there and I really fell in love with the campus. And then my first meeting was with Dr. Mueller. He is my organ professor now. And he was just so welcoming and asked me some really good questions and things that I hadn't really thought about and really made me consider even more the possibility of working in the church someday, especially with organ, because I had started organ when I was sixth or seventh grade with my mom Mm -hmm. being my teacher and then contramuth and So I was more serious about it then too. So then as I had to actually make a decision, I just realized I wanted to do church music and cello and Concordia Irvine was the best spot for that because it was, it has, in my opinion, the best string program at least. Mm. It has a really, really good orchestra. And so I wanted to really pursue still my love of cello, which I still love, but also be able to do that church music aspect of it. And so... I can do both at Concordia and that's just amazing. So, yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. And I, I, I would have to agree. I mean, strings at the uh, orchestra at Concordia Irvine is phenomenal. We got to air their Christmas at Concordia this past year and yeah. it was just amazing. And you were in that, right? Yeah. I, I, I was definitely a part of that. I had so much fun. It's, I feel like it's one of our biggest opportunities at Concordia is to, I mean, be on PBS is the biggest thing there, which is so cool. And I play principal cellist, so I'm sitting in the front, so I get some extra more quartet things. So I was playing for one of the students' compositions, and it was really, really cool. So I, I love being a part of that. And you guys came on tour to St. Louis, too. Yeah. So we, we, my husband and I got to go to that concert when oh, you guys awesome. were in St. Louis. So it was impressive to see how large... The orchestra is and how good you guys are so that's that's a that's such a cool opportunity for you to have in yeah, college it is such a really cool opportunity and we're growing and so that's also really cool to be a part of too so yeah, yeah. 
So it sounds like you have a wonderful experience in the music department with organ and orchestra. Uh, let's talk about some of the classes because you do have to go to class <laughs> once in a while too yeah. um, for church music and director of parish music. Um, so what are some of the classes that are an important part of your formation as a director of parish music? Going into junior year, correct? Yes. So I took doctrine this past year and that's one of the classes that are required for my DPM minor, director of parish music minor. Mm -hmm. And so that was really helpful in just, I, I read the Book of Concord in my Wittenberg Academy classes as in high school. So just having that again as with all of my other classmates that are also pursuing church work was really cool and being able to struggle with some of the things that maybe I didn't struggle as much with in high school was really cool. And like I, I wrote my paper on women's ordination, which most girls don't do. That is what my professor said. And so he was like, why don't you do that? So that was really cool just researching more about like why we as Lutherans believe what we believe about that. And yeah, so that's one of on the more church side of things. In terms of music, though, my music history class, I feel like has been a huge influence on me just because I took music history one my first semester of my sophomore year. And most of the beginning of church history music or most of his, the history of music is in the church. Of course, and yeah. so yeah. It, a lot of it was very applicable for me, which for maybe some of my other classmates, they didn't feel like that as much. And so I just had so much fun just reading about all of these different church musicians that really helped shaped all of the music that we have today. And so I just, that was such a joy for me. And I did, that paper was on some sequence chants and the progression of how that kind of started and then how Luther used it and then how Bach used that as well. So yeah, Pasakali and yeah, so it was just such a okay. joy. So Lutheran Ladies Lounge listeners may know what a sequence chant is because we talk about some of that in the weeds on that podcast, but break down what some sequence chants are for our listeners who don't know these terms because it's a cool thing. Okay, so basically it's it it's it's a line of music mm -hmm. and it's generally for it's in a mass and but most of them were banned. Yeah. Like all except for three. So Victim Apostolicali was one of the three that was kept. And then also Dies Irae is also another one of those. So that one's pretty famous. And like, you can hear that through a lot of like different soundtracks. Like, so anyway, but it's the sequence chant is a line of music and it's sacred, obviously. And so then this tune is carried throughout different chorale tunes as well. And then it just gets used. And so we still sing it today. So, yeah, we have the Victim of Pascali in our Lutheran service book. Yeah, so do. that's one that we still use. I think it's 461. It's 460, 459 and 460. Yeah. No, yeah. 461. That's I know that my Redeemer lives. So 459 and 460. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. We're in the weeds now. Sorry. <laughs> I'm him nerding out. Anyway, <laughs> back to your formational experience. <laughs> Now, you, you, that's, those classes sound amazing, and it sounds like you're really just absorbing all of this amazing stuff mm -hmm. from your professors at Irvine. What about other formational experiences, getting uh, more experience in churches or leading certain uh, things as, as more of that formation in the real world? What do you get to do for that? Yeah, so I did an internship last summer in, in Irvine, actually. Mm -hmm. So I was at Abiding Savior with Christian Giebert. And he allowed me to play for their services. So I got an opportunity to serve both in their traditional service and then also in their contemporary service, mm -hmm. which the contemporary side was a little more unfamiliar for me as an organist. So it was cool to understand that side of things. And so I helped plan services. He allowed me to direct a handbell choir and a choral choir. So that was a really cool experience. So that's, we have to do internships for the DPM minor. So that's mm -hmm. really cool. And then throughout the school year, I also just get to play for other services, local Lutheran churches, which is really cool. Yeah. And for chapel as well, which mm -hmm. that's actually one of the hugest experiences. I think I get to, I've gotten to play matins and then play hymns for other chapel services. And that's really cool. Uh, now you get to play organ, I assume, for yes. them. Do you get to play strings for the services occasionally? Yes. Sometimes, especially for special chapel services. So like our Easter chapel or I think I played for our Ash Wednesday service this past year. So, and usually I won't just play cello by myself. I'll have like 
be in a trio or a quartet. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. That's cool. So what would you say is your favorite thing about being a student at Concordia? It sounds like you're just enjoying and, and like, like Sarah everything said, absor is. <laughs> absorbing everything. Whoa, what, what's the highlight of being at a, at a Concordia University, um, an LCMS institution? I think it's the people that I enjoy the most, faculty and students, because the faculty being such a cool experience and they have such great knowledge, a great wealth of knowledge for me to pick their brains and understand better why they believe what they believe, why I believe what I believe, why I should change what I believe even sometimes. So, and our, all of our faculty are so great about having conversations with us no matter when in the day, which is so cool. And then the students also are just really willing to learn. And so I love getting to grow with them too. So I, I just love the interaction with all the people and getting to understand them. We were talking with Olivia Tucky, she's church music and director of parish music student at Concordia University, Irvine, where the Set Apart to Serve series will continue the conversation in just a moment, right here on the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. <laughs> At Concordia University, Wisconsin, we believe you were created for a reason, to use your God-given gifts to help others, to live a life of self-sacrifice in a me-first world, to live a life that's uncommon. Whether you're taking one of 50-plus online programs or learning with us in person on the shores of Lake Michigan, you'll be equipped to make an uncommon impact. Learn more at cuw.edu. Concordia University, Wisconsin. Live uncommon. Welcome back to the Coffee Hour. I'm Sarah Golseth. I'm Andy Bates. We're talking with Olivia Telke, a church music and director of parish music student at Concordia University, Irvine, in our Set Apart to Serve series while we are at the LCMS Institute on Liturgy, Preaching, and Church Music. So this is, I mean, this is these are your people here this week. <laughs> yeah. How has it been for you at this conference, like just getting to kind of be around all these people that, that are doing the thing that you want to do? Mm -hmm. It's been a really, really cool experience. So I'm working with the children's choir for the Institute, and there's a quite a few of us from different Concordias that are also helping with it. And so it's been a lot of fun just getting to know other people from other Concordias that also want to do the same thing as me. Mm -hmm. So there's two other people from Concordia, from Concordia Irvine that I already yeah. know. So that makes it a little bit more comfortable, I guess. But getting to know the others is also really cool and just understanding what they want to do with their love of music and church music specifically in the future and kind of how that also fits in with what I want to do too is just, that's really cool. So, yeah. Mm. How do you... Well, let's talk about the, the people who have shaped you. Yeah. Who, who are the people that have shaped you into the person that you are as a child of God and as a future church worker? <laughs> well, I definitely have to say my parents have shaped me to be who I am, especially as a child of God and my mom more specifically as a church musician, especially since she was one when I was growing up. Her love of music and her love for Christ, my mom specifically, has just helped me grow and just pushed me to be who I am, um, always pursuing excellence and, but for the sake of, you know, being excellent, but for Christ and not for my own, like, growth, I guess. I mean, it is, I guess, for my own growth, but it's really for Christ and his kingdom. So mm -hmm. it's my mom mostly, but my uncle is also a kind of a big part of that he's a church musician right now and so i want to be like him too so yeah those i think those are the biggest people that have shaped my life and who how who i want to be i guess yeah yeah and you've mentioned a couple of of experiences along the way wittenberg academy and your time you were at saint paul hamill yes, yes. i was yeah so you know, for your your college student now, but thinking about your time a little bit younger, and and what kinds of what kinds of experiences other younger people in like middle school and high school 
could what kinds of experiences were were helpful for you that other younger people could think about and consider if they're if they're thinking about following in this path also because you've had a lot of great experiences yeah so my mom has always helped us let us be a part of different conferences like this one and other conferences that also are like CCLE or Higher Things. Higher Things is a huge one. I got to sing and play for Higher Things when I got to go as a high schooler. And so that was just a really cool experience for me. And also, again, the people and just getting to know those people from all different churches around the United States, which was has been so cool. And then let's see what other experiences. Going to St. Paul Hamill, we have chapel every day. And so that is a huge part of who I am. If that's possible where you are, go to chapel. I, I love matins and all of the different services that I've gotten to do because of being going to St. Paul Hamill for those three years that I had from sixth through eighth grade. And it was just, I I wish I still had that every single day. I do have a little bit of it at Concordia, but it's not matins every day, but it's, oh, I just... I love it so much. So if you can be at chapel every day, do it. <laughs> or churches provide, or schools just have chapel every day because it's such an informative experience. Loved it so much. Yeah. Yeah. So now you're here among your people who speak your language <laughs> at it's the beautiful. Institute, Institute on Liturgy, Preaching, and Church Music. <laughs> what, do you, what do you want to walk away from this conference with? What... Yeah, let's start with that and then we'll unpack some more as well. So what do you yeah. what do you want to gain from this conference? I think just a better understanding of how to apply church music or how to be a better church musician in my church. Not only someday when I get a call after I graduate in a couple of years, but even now like as I'm substituting, so learning how to maybe just do different improvisations for hymn tunes or mm-hmm. something like that. Just being more creative with the things that I have already been given and the foundation that I have. And the best way to do that, I think, is by learning from the people, being inspired here by not only the services that we have, but also by the other musicians that are just absolutely incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Who are some of the people that you've met? What is what is the networking like for you being around all of these people, these names that you may see in in your music that now you get to actually have a a chance to talk to. What's that been like for you? It's really, it's really, really cool. So Hunter Hildebrand, Mm -hmm. he directed the small string group that we had last night. And so that was really cool just being under his direction and we played one of his pieces. And so being able to do that and just, it's, it's, actually his music so he knows exactly yeah. how he wanted it to sound so mm-hmm. or it's like be more legato here that's how i want it so you know we'll, <laughs> we'll do that so it's just it's things like that i'm trying to think who else have i met just just other even presenters to learning from their expertise today i went to two different sessions on psalms and the propers and things like that mm. and so just understanding the history of the rich history that we have of the ordinaries and the propers and how to use that in the church too. So yeah. really, really cool. Yeah. Let's, okay, let's go forward a few years. Let's say you re- are at the point of receiving a call as a director of parish music. What are some of the things you're just uh, eager to get into a, a parish and get to do as a director of parish music? Um. Well, I'm excited to worship with the same congregation and get to know them um and be able to lead them in their music i'm really hope that i would have the capability to inspire people to sing more at church um if not through my playing i well i hope it's primarily through my playing but also just in the person that my parents have helped me become and everyone else has helped me become just being an encouraging person in their life to encourage that music, whether it's singing or playing, or I just hope that I can be organizational in that aspect too and getting people involved in church and the music because the song is, should be a part of everyone's worship life because it has been since the beginning of time. That's what we've all been talking about with these Psalms. That's, you know, eh, 
everyone sings <laughs> psalms and they're meant to be sung and so um we should use our voice in that way and i i hope i can help people do that yeah yeah how have how have all these experiences at institute all of these services focusing on the psalms and singing by the end of this week we'll have gone through all 150 <laughs> of them how have they formed you in in faith formation and, and as a child of god you know maybe not completely separated from from your vocation as a, a student and, and working toward that director of parish music, but just in your own personal life as a child of God, how is how are these things forming you? I think the Psalms specifically, there's a Psalm for any way that you are feeling in that moment. And so to be able to turn to those Psalms in sadness, in happiness, in you know, like, I'm just not feeling it right now, but this psalm says rejoice, and so I will, you know. The psalms are so inf influential in helping me form just the way I look at the world, and either it helps me stay in the the mood that I'm already in, in that rejoicing mood, or even in the lamenting mood that we were talking about last night. It's it's okay to be sad sometimes. It This world is, is sad, but there is a time for rejoicing and you know, on that last day, there will be great rejoicing. And so <laughs> those psalms are just re really helpful in the Christian life. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Well-spoken. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about your generation. So, uh -oh. Well, and what you get to do, uh, you get to play a key role in leading the church's song as a director of parish music, leading a congregation in in their song. What do you think is important to your generation in terms of gathering together around God's gifts and singing the church's song? What, what's important to you? What's important to your peers in this coming generation? I'm old, you know, I'm, I'm, it, and I know what's important, but I'm curious. I want to hear what's important to uh, this generation as well. That's so interesting. I don't know if I, for me, it's, it's looking back at the things that we've maybe neglected for a while. I feel like we, there's so much music that we've kind of left untouched because it's too old or too antiquated, but we haven't sung it in a while. And it's actually really, really cool. And so I think actually like bringing that music back and maybe, you know, putting a modern twist on some of those tunes or just those melodies, I guess, is something that's good that we can you know add to that but i don't know bringing back the old things seem really important to me since you know we just kind of lost that a little bit yeah i'm i'm not quite your generation but i can feel that sure. <laughs> i like the old stuff too do you have some favorite old pieces old composers things that things that really resonate with you as you're practicing and, and discovering them and even hear things that you've been discovering because I know there's been a lot of uh, discovery of pieces and, and composers and things throughout this conference as well. What are some of your what 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 gets you excited okay. to like play or to <laughs> practice? <laughs> yeah, well, I we've been doing a lot of chanting, but like Gregorian chant even, and that I've never done that in church really ever before. Like we did that in my church music history class or just my music history class. Sorry. But it was never very serious. But I, it's, the melodies are so powerful. And I love that they emphasize certain words mm -hmm. that maybe you wouldn't get with your normal chant A or chant B, you know, or whatever, yeah. because they're so, you know, very, okay, that's where we're terminating. It doesn't really account for the words themselves. Mm -hmm. But some of these Gregorian chant are specific for these psalms. Mm -hmm. And so it's really cool to have music that is for specific text in order to highlight, like, what's important there. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I guess that motivates me. I, I love text painting and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So, yeah, it's good stuff. For the young person in the parish who is maybe starting cello or maybe sitting on dad's lap singing hymns or maybe learning organ, um, what would you say to them about considering using those gifts for service in the church? I would say don't shy away from it. It's a little scary for sure, but there's a ton of people that want to help you and don't don't give up. Just continue to love love doing it 
And even if there's a time where you don't take a take a step back, you know, and then come back to it. Don't don't leave it. Always come back because it's such a wonderful gift. And even if you don't want to specifically be in charge and be the church music director or whatever, we always need people to be in the choir or be in the church orchestra or be in handbells or something. Just yeah. Don't don't be afraid to help and volunteer and continue doing those things and learning that and loving it. So using those gifts. Love it. Our guest today, Olivia Telke, church music and director of parish music student at Concordia University, Irvine. Thank you so much for being our guest. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. You can learn more about Set Apart to Serve by visiting lcms.org slash SAS. You've been listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support The Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you. Anytime. Anywhere. Anywhere.